What's going on guys, Waco from Revolution here with Eleanor Picciotto and we want to give you the content that you ask for. So a lot of people have been asking the new Louis Vuitton Tambour, beautiful addition to the integrated bracelet uh, field of watches, but how does it compare to some other sort of uh, watches that have been around for a little bit longer? So we have on Eleanor's wrist, the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Perpetual Calendar 41mm in blue ceramic. It's a very nice watch. Thank you very much. And I have on my wrist uh, the Vacheron Constantin 222, the new version that has, uh, was released a few years back, um, and a watch that I have recently picked up from the manufacturer and something that I really, really love. But um, we want to give to you our impressions of wearing these watches, which we know very well, and how that relates to the experience of wearing a Vuitton Tambour. So Eleanor, why don't you take it away? Sure. So first, we've been talking about integrated bracelet for a very long time. Uh, when we celebrated the anniversary of the Royal Oak, which obviously we do have in one of the most modern version, it raised back the debate of why and how integrated bracelet is cool, it's comfortable, it's easy. It also makes, to some extent, most watches much lighter, which is strangely enough, because when you think, okay, integrated, you've got either a gold version like the one you're wearing, we've got, uh, I mean, Louis Vuitton introduced the tambour with a fully integrated steel version, and here we have a blue ceramic. Within all of these watches, it actually doesn't make a big difference because on the wrist and on a daily basis, it doesn't change much. You just have it, you wear it, and you don't feel it. And I guess it's my first take on why and how integrated bracelets are important. Okay, so the, my theory as to why everyone loves integrated bracelet watches is the following. I think that today there are no more dress codes, right? Um, I think that, it, it, you know, it's funny, like I remember a few years ago I came to Paris and I went to Elan de Rose and then I was like super hot because for whatever reason French people like their restaurants to be really, really warm in, in winter time. And so I started to take my jacket off and the maitre was like, oh no, 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 no. You know, which meant that I couldn't take my jacket off because that would cause me to no longer be in the correct dress code. Well, that doesn't exist anymore, thank God. Right now, thanks to COVID, we've accelerated a realm in which everyone can wear pretty much what they want as long as they do it with style and you don't be vanguard, right? <laughs> if, if you want to understand what that means, you can go watch one of our previous videos. So the- Or Emily in Paris for the matter. <laughs> exactly. However, uh, the point is that an integrated bracelet watch is perfect for every, you know, sort of form of dress. It works with uh, sports chic, it works casual, it works if you're dressed up as well. And I love that because it allows people to be incredibly adaptable in terms of the watch that they like to wear. But the first thing that I want to talk about when you look at an integrated bracelet watch, and yes, we all know these watches from that side, but look, let's look at them from that side, right? Which I mean the bracelet side. You've got a pretty cool battle going on. You've got the Vacheron 222 and you've got the fully uh, yellow gold new LV tambour that just launched. Okay, so that's what I mean also. A great integrated bracelet watch is not just a timepiece, but it's like a piece of formed art for the wrist, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that when you look at the bracelet side of both of these watches, you can see a really distinct pattern that makes you understand immediately what watch that is. And the Vuitton watch does that perfectly as well. Because if you look at that, the expression of the links with these tiny center links as well, like you can, if you know that uh, the tambour like, you know, codes, you know immediately what watch that is. But on top of that, that bracelet is incredibly comfortable because of how small the links are. And supple. And supple and how well rounded they are as well, you know? So let's look at the, the way in which the watches have been integrated. So I want you to take that watch off of your wrist and hold it up to the camera because I just want to see the way in which the bracelet has been integrated into the watch. So this is the feeling that I have about Royal Oaks, and it's not a discredit to the Royal Oak. I love this watch. It's probably my favorite watch of all time. But when you hold it this way, you can see that there is a little bit of overhang from when... It's stiff, and then it goes... Yeah. So either it fits your wrist or it doesn't, right? Which is the thing with Royal Oaks. Well, and again, if you have a smaller wrist, then there's smaller sizes, 37mm and 34mm. But that's the interesting thing about the Vuitton watch is that it fits a much greater variety of wrists because the integration of the bracelet has been directly to the case as opposed to having any sort of like, you know, center lugs or horn, uh, um, lugs as well. And I think that that's really nice. So on the wrist as well, and you know, Eleanor, I know you love that version of it, maybe we can put you on. I think that that's one thing that I really love about this new Vuitton watch is it's really, really supple, right? The other thing that I would say is that I know that a lot of watches have been kind of moving towards slimmer and slimmer proportions. I know the Octa Finissimo, I guess it's the current champion of that as well. But a watch doesn't have to be super, super thin to me. It just has to be proportional. And I would and say that what's great about both of these watches is how proportional they are. 
right? And I would say that the Vuitton watch also has done that really well, right? Because, you know, the initial Tumblr watches were really thick. I think they were over like 13 mm in terms of thickness. And now you've got a watch that's under nine mm in terms of thickness, 40 mm in terms of the, the diameter uh, at the base of the watch and it narrows to 39 mm of the bezel, right? But I also love the little codes that have made it feel slimmer as well. The bezel, for example, those so, like subtle integration of those polished lines make this watch feel slimmer. And then the way in which just under the crown, it starts to sort of like fade away and slope down mm -hmm. towards the the, the the sapphire case back. It's really cool. It's a subtle way of making the watch a little bit bassine, I believe is the French term. <laughs> so in the end, how do I feel about this watch relative to, I mean, how do you feel relative to the, the other integrated bracelet watches? Well, one have? thing I'd like to add, because a lot of, again, we're in an industry where you guys, collectors, fan, enthusi watch enthusiasts who are watching us, you like to compare things. You like to compare pieces with pieces, brand with others. And right now, we're going to do the job for you. We're going to compare the 222, the initial Vacheron Constantin, to the new uh, Tambour in yellow gold. And Brad Pitt, if you hear us, <laughs> you've got the Vacheron. Now let's get you the Louis Vuitton. Uh, jokes aside, when you look at it, okay, you look at it on the spec sheet, it's two integrated bracelet, it's two full gold. You still have some sort of work on the dial, in the case, on the movement. But when you actually hold them together next to one another, you have a subtlety in the color. It doesn't feel like it's the same color, yet no, not at all. it is. Yeah. It doesn't feel like it's the same weight, yet it almost is. And you, it's only in those tiny and slight differences that you can tell that if one works for you, the other one will, with a totally different idea, with a totally different DNA. And I guess it fits them all. And also, on a woman's side of things, it's really hard to decide which one I'd love to wear. I think that's the cool thing about it as well. I think like holding these watches next to each other, you realize that if you like that, you're probably going to love that too. Even if you can't right. explain why. Yeah, exactly. And I think that, and I think it's, it's the identity of the watches just come through in such different ways. You're absolutely right. Like there's a lot of things that they are basically, you know, similar, right? So they're both yellow gold watches. But then of course the choice of the the uh, yellow gold that's been used in both of these watches is very different. The Vashmore has a much more sort of, I would say it's slightly reddish um, kind of color to it, which is- Sechnid has a little more copper, even though it's not really a lot of copper. in yellow gold, but I guess it's the way, it's the finish, it's more satiné, silky touch versus the, basically it's as if you have a vintage and a modern watch. Absolutely. You know, and this watch was created to be an homage to the original 222 as well, whereas this is a wholly modern watch which has its own kind of like... So the exercise has been done in a perfect way, in a perfect execution. Right. That's the modern version you should have and that's the new version of the old one that you should also get. So I guess it's gonna be hard when you, you say, Brad Pitt, we found your, your next watch for you. Yeah, Brad Pitt, if you listen to me, call me. I'll explain to you everything. Uh, and so now we're gonna put um, Eleanor's phone number up now for it. Brad Pitt, if you are watching this, you can, you can have that and please get in touch with us. So guys, I think the conclusion that we have, whether it's in yellow gold, whether it's in steel, or whether it's in this beautiful rose gold uh, edition, is that the new Louis Vuitton Tambour watch is a great addition to the integrated bracelet field. It's wonderful because it's not derivative or it doesn't follow the design um, philosophy of anything else. It creates its own design philosophy that's very much rooted in the watch. It was initially created in uh, 2002, right? It's a reborn version of that. It's a version of it that has so much integrity in terms of the movement that's inside of it. There's so much beauty and subtlety in terms of the different finishes that have been used, as I mentioned before. My favorite thing here is the bezel that has this hidden Louis Vuitton signature on it, uh, which is slightly polished as well, so it just stands off in relief from the, the brush, um, the background of the bezel. And it's like so subtly done, you actually can't even see it unless you are aware that it's there, especially not if you've got bad eyesight like me. But it's a great addition to the integrated bracelet category. It's a great watch and it feels great on the wrist as well. So go and check it out. Cheers. <laughs>